on to uh, what I told you before, that our guest uh, this morning uh, is Ahmed uh, Buhari. Uh, Mr. Buhari is, well, was the uh, vice presidential candidate of the, well, on the books, you know, for record, for history. He still is. That's the way it's going to be. Uh, but, of course, you know that um, APC won the um, election, and Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu uh, will be sworn in. It, he has been declared and will be sworn in on the um, 29th of May. Uh, but uh, Mr. Ahmed uh, Buhari, Vice Presidential Candidate, African Democratic Congress, and is here. He's a consultant in uh, the oil and gas sector, and uh, we're delighted to have you. Good morning to you, Mr. Buhari. Uh, Uncle Yori, good morning. Uncle good to be here. Much, sir, for making time for us. Um, well, we wanted to sort of... Uh, you know, sample your mind, pick your brains on um, the battle for National Assembly top jobs and uh, hear what your perspective is. As you know, there are all sorts of um, combinations uh, out there, uh, ranging from, if you look at the Senate, president, uh, Senate presidency, there are a lot of people who are saying that uh, maybe that's going to, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, southeast. Or, or something like that. The House of Reps, you know, that's going somewhere else. What are your thoughts on one, how you would go, how we should be going in the interest of effective governance and uh, equity in the polity? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I think, um, like you said, indeed, the presidential election has been won and lost. Um, we've got... Um, um, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu as the president-elect. Uh, it was a contest we all participated in. And I do remember very clearly that um, about a week before the election of the presidential election, we did mention very clearly to Nigerians that indeed the, uh, Tunubu was the man to beat. We also did not clearly throw our towel in the ring, but we made very clearly to Nigerians that we do not see uh, victory in sight. And and if anybody wants to beat Tinubu, they would have to all align to create that momentous force that could actually give them the victory collectively against the APC. Uh, most of them felt they were going to win on their own and they still went ahead. But clearly, um, it was a race between APC and a divided PDP. Uh, because for, when you look at it critically, every other contestant on the other side, especially the major ones like the Labour Party and the NNPP, were all um, breakaways from the PDP. There was absolutely no way um, they could actually come with a splitted vote and create the impact that they were hoping to create. Uh, once again, um, Ashiwa just sort of um, showed the country that indeed he is an astute politician uh, because he campaigned in the areas where he knew he was the weakest. And we clearly saw that um, for everybody who was actually paying attention, he moved to the north he made sure he won the North. He made sure he, uh, he garnered the support of them from the North. He became so popular in the North that even the Northern candidates were struggling for recognition. Uh, I think those are things you should respect. Uh, we had other contestants in the race who decided at that point that they were going to focus on their already strong pools, where they knew they were going to get the votes anyway. But I guess they felt comfortable contesting or campaigning in those areas. Uh, again, Ashiwaju beat most of us in that regard. And so when you look at it critically, 70% of the support of, of the votes that Ashiwaju really got at that election really, really came from uh, the northern part of the country, precisely the, 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 the northwest. And, and, and if you look at the votes that every other contestant even got, whether the, um, the PDP, who would boast about 80% from the north, the uh, NNPP, who would boast of about 98% from the north, and the Labour Party obviously got most of its votes from, uh, from the South. Um, you, would, you would want to advise Bola Ahmed Tunubu, who I know that I've spoken to some of my friends, the APC, who have clearly said that um, they do not think that Bola Ahmed Tunubu would want to interfere in who emerges as the Senate leader or the Speaker of the House, and that it is in its own political nature to ensure that due process is followed. But if we would have to advise from a political perspective, I think it's important mm. for us to understand that we definitely need competence, first of all. We definitely need a true politician, and we definitely need somebody that the entire House can listen to, work with, only for the progress of this country. 
And just like what we experienced during the 8th Assembly, where indeed we saw a lot of um, uh, leaders of the National Assembly going at loggerheads with the executive, I do believe that they're there to checkmate each other, but that in the long run they are supposed to work together for the benefit of the Nigerian people. It is my hope that the political calculation, which is what we're supposed to be focused on, is to see that indeed the Northwest that brought the biggest bulk votes to uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu should be considered at a time like this with regards to how you want to maintain the strength within the party. And also, I'm a politician, and what we do mostly is to look ahead and say, after the next uh, four years, where are we going to be getting that bulk vote that we have not mismanaged or mishandled in such a way that we do not have control over over, over that bulk vote. And again, it's the force to the Northwest. So I, it is my honest, sincere advice that uh, contestants or for the office of the Senate president, for example, should really, um, you know, from the Northwest, should really gear up at a time like this, present themselves before the National Assembly and the Nigerian people, and hopefully some opinion molders like um, we see around could actually speak about these things from a, an objective point of view, which regards mm. to how well the policy can favor the ruling party and Bola Ahmed Tunubu in particular. You know, you said earlier that um, uh, uh, Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tunubu, Democrat that he is and all of that, might not really want to interfere in the quote unquote internal affairs of uh, the National Assembly. but. Do you recall that we had that experience one when the sitting president, Muhammadu Buhari, had said something similar? And um, as you recall, there are a lot of political politicians and political analysts who were to come back and blame uh, Buhari uh, for uh, Saraki uh, becoming the Senate president. Uh, so it was an idealistic position that, no, 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 I'm the president. It's a separate town, the separation of powers. You people do what you need to do. Uh, in the light of that experience, because there were a lot of complaints when, you know, Senator Bukola Saraki became the Senate president, uh, do you think, are, are you still, uh, are, are you happy with that uh, stance that uh, Tinumbu being the Democrat that he is might not want to interfere? I don't know that interfere is the right word, but maybe engage with, with colleagues from there. <laughs> I, I, like your cho I, I, I like your choice of word. I think he should engage. I think he should take charge. Uh, we saw what happened with uh, Muhammad Buhari and how he managed and struggled to, um, to maintain unity and, of course, collaboration with the uh, Eighth Assembly. It didn't go too well. So that is why I said I've been hearing that people have been saying that he doesn't intend to interfere because of the, his democratic nature. But I'm saying very clearly that um, he does need to show some level of control at a time like this. He needs to let the people understand that if we want to go very far, then maybe we should work together and have this engagement with all regions clamoring for the leadership of the Senate, for example, to say, let us work together and see how we can progress collectively. Because at the end of the day, I, I, I think for lawmakers here, yeah, the, the primary concern should be that they are a representative of the people and not for themselves. Which is why I keep saying that at every point in time, there should be true engagement with the constituencies, with the stakeholders, ensuring that more than anything else, they are working towards an harmonious uh, collaboration to see that the Nigerian people at the end of the day are the true first beneficiaries of this democracy. But at the, at that, at that, in that same, that same light, it's important that we, we must recognize that these people, at the end of the day, these people that we have put in there, if they are unable to work together with the executive and hopefully with the judiciary, they will not be able to provide those policies, those uh, action plans that we would have to send to the, um, the civil service structure that we'll be hoping would see that all of these plans and policies designed by the free arms of government get executed so that the Nigerian people can have the benefits or, or the dividends of the democracy that they've always uh, hoped for. Mm. Okay, I've, I've heard what you have said that, look, by your analysis, and, you know, by your analysis, really, no need to overlabor the point. The Northwest, you wouldn't, you know, be surprised if uh, the Senate president were to be zoned or it were to come from there. 
I wanted to ask your thoughts on how about the Southeast? Because as you know, there's been a lot of talk in that direction. We need to, you know, see what we can do uh, so that everybody has a sense of inclusiveness, whatever other rationale that you might have heard. Your thoughts personally on the idea. You've explained why to you it would be the Northwest. Uh, but what do you think about those um, agitations? Yeah, I, I think... I think very, very strongly that um, for the sake of national unity and representation, um, I would love to see uh, the Southeast as a uh, Southeastern and as a Senate president. But again, when we look at these things sometimes, you're also looking at them from a perspective of the politics itself. You know, there are emotions, there are sentiments that we actually like to cling to when we make all of this analysis. But again, we, we would also be very careful because um, Bola Ahmed Tunubu should also be thinking, if I make a Senate president from the Southeast and I lose some of the, um, some of the trust or political uh, strength that I've built in the Northwest, how would I face them in another uh, election cycle? knowing fully well that the reaction from the Southeast hasn't quite shown that it, they will be willing to vote Ebola Amit Tunubu should another election cycle come. Now, so it will now look as if you have indeed um, satisfied your uh, sensitivity around what the people might say, but in the actual sense of it, politically, you have lost grounds. So these are critical areas that people should actually pay attention to. Um, I'm from the North uh, Central. Um, I would have loved to see my, this, the um, Senate president emerge from my zone, but I'm just being realistic with regards to how you can move your politics forward. And, um, as you said uh, uh, of uh, that um, if you were to try to pander uh, to that, the sentiment of what people might think, what would make people happy, I, I don't know that he's going to do that. I mean, the man did come up with what has been referred to as a Muslim-Muslim ticket. And everybody was saying that, ah, oh, that is suicidal. That will never work. And all. But he's a, man, he's a man of after his own mind, and uh, it did work. So I, I doubt that the man is going to uh, go in that direction. Uh, but when it comes to the, uh, how about the, of course, the Senate president has to have, staying in the House of Reps, I mean, the Senate for, for the moment will go over to the House of Reps, perhaps. But... How about the, you know, the Deputy Senate President? Yes, um, this is a good chance for, yeah, this is a good chance for the um, Southeast. I think um, the way the Nigerian politics works, and nobody should feel bad about what I'm about to say, uh, we, have, we have a huge number of voters from the northern part of the country, and this is due to a lot of factors. Whether you want to look at it from the social, religious perspective where we do not believe that um, restricting family growth should be an agenda. Uh, when you go to the north, you see a lot of people who have maybe four wives and a lot of children. And that is why we are more than anybody else in the country. But again, because it's politics and because it's about numbers, you always have to come back to the fact that that number is what you're actually looking for and seeing how that number can help you achieve what you want to achieve. It has nothing to do with anything about superiority or a, a region feeling like it's better than the other region. No, it is about politics. And when it comes to politics, everything every politician is looking for is uh, the numbers. So I'm going to say very critically that um, if you look back in history, uh, especially after the Nigerian Civil War, before the Nigerian Civil War, as a matter of fact, there was a very good cordial relationship between the northern part of the country and the eastern part of the country. As a matter of fact, Amadou Bello and uh, Namdi Azikiwe were like the best of buddies. And, and on the other side was um, uh, Chief, um, uh, Chief Awolowo. And, and, and after the war, after the Nigerian Civil War, the, that brotherhood between the north and the east was a bit uh, tense. And that was why when the hats, when Musa Muhammad was, was uh, assassinated, the North came together to pick somebody that felt they could trust. And they picked uh, uh, 
uh, Obasanjo at that point in time, former President Obasanjo. And the reason for picking President Obasanjo was because they were hoping that President Obasanjo would hold on to power and see how he can run his base and give the power back to the North. Stage one, he passed. He gave the power back to uh, the North. The North, the, the, the North emerged, as a matter of fact. And then we, I remember we had all of this brouhaha about the election was rigged and what have you. After we went through the military era again for many years, we came back to 1999, and the North had to pick somebody they felt they could trust again. And because of what had happened in 1979, they picked Obasanjo again. Now, Obasanjo managed the space for eight years and still passed power back to the North. This is a history of almost 25, 30 years that has also regained the trust between the North and the West. And I can tell you very clearly, that relationship between, or that covenant between Obasanjo and some elders from the North is what has made the Southwest a better friend to the North today. Things do, do not just happen. People build relationships, and people work on those relationships to move forward, which is why my advice would be that I'm hoping that a, a Southeasterner would work really hard right now hopefully to become the Deputy Senate President only, only so that the, the, the South East can be seen in the forefront and we can build that relationship, we can build that trust and see how we can let the people in the North know that, look, those days are yesteryears. This is a new generation and we need to move forward. Sometimes when I speak about this, is people say, you know what, people are refusing to let go of what happened in 1966 or the Civil War. But let me tell you something, even in a state like the United States of America, it took them almost 200 years after their civil war before a southerner in the United States could emerge as a president. Now this is food for thought. I don't want us to get that long. The right things have got to be done, especially as it concerns how to harmonize all of those gaps right now. It doesn't, it has to be a process. It does not have to happen immediately. And I'm hoping and praying that we must shift aside sentiments, emotions, and all of those distractions and see how we can build this trust towards achieving a lasting solution among all regions of the country, not necessarily the North or the West, but the North, the West, the East, the South, and the Middle Belt, and everybody. And then in that process, we can alienate religion, religious differences, social status differences, and focus on true governance that will actually give dividends of democracy to the Nigerian people.